Knights fans, welcome to another episode of Night Watch. I'm your host, Larry Kay. Just wanted to do a quick recap of the Scarlet Knights' latest victory against Virginia Tech. Uh, my prediction was actually 28, and I said this to a few people at the tailgate in the blue lot. My prediction was 28 to 17. It wound up being 35 16, so not so far off base. I did think and I predicted that the game would be a little bit uncomfortably close at some point in the game, either when it started or maybe in that lull in the third quarter. We once again, this is the second week in a row that we had a lull in the third quarter and I got nervous. Um, talk about that in a second. Uh, Gavin Wimsett only 49 passing yards. Uh, Drones had 190 passing yards. I knew he would give us trouble. Because he's mobile, he created problems with his legs, he opened things up with his legs, he made plays off schedule. I knew that would happen. Um, some concerns with a quarterback like that, once in a while with our secondary, there was one specific play where it looked like Max Melton was limping a little and not in position. And I said to the person sitting with me at the game, I said, watch number nine. And sure enough, number nine, who's a pretty good receiver, by the way, Goes flying down the, the sideline, and the only reason that wasn't a touchdown was because Jones missed him long. Uh, but Max was burned on that play. I hope he's okay. I'm not sure what I saw, but I did see it looked like a little tweak at some point. Hopefully Max gets up to form because some of these other guys are going to burn us pretty bad. I think overall, though, the defense had a good showing. Uh, bend but don't break. Came through when we needed them. Uh, came up with turnovers that changed the pr complexion of the game. Obviously, the you know early fumble early in the game, turning right into a Kyle Manungai touchdown was huge. It set the tone. This team, with the way our offense is and can be sometimes with passing, but the way we have a great running back room and the way we've been running the ball, uh, starting off with a lead is absolutely uh, integral to, to having the games go the way we want them to go. So that was good to see. Uh, Gavin Wimsett, a lot of running. The one touchdown run was just he showed off his speed. He showed off that he's a weapon. I like that they did it in this game, and I think it boded well for this game, but also bodes well going forward in the sense that teams have to be on alert for his ability to run. They have to account for his ability to run, and when you have to account for a quarterback being able to burn you uh, with his legs, you have to, you know, other things open up. So I think that's a good opportunity. We did not see a prolific passing game, to say the least, in this game. And there's a lot of worry I'm seeing on the boards and elsewhere. Look, Wimsett is still a work in progress, but he's still developing. This was probably his least you know, good game so far out of the three. But we expected that as VTech had probably the best defense we've played out of the three. And look, there was a, a, a play early on where I knew... It was a miscommunication. Like, it wasn't inaccuracy. It was a miscommunication. Gavin threw an out route, and the receiver was headed up the sideline. You know, and, and Shiano acknowledged that even in his post game. So there's some things we have to work through. He was inaccurate on other throws. But then you had a, a, a called pass interference call, interference call with Ian Strong, and a non-call, you know, in the end zone where the, the defender was all over the receiver. So it wasn't all attributable to Gavin being inaccurate. And there's a little bit more of a narrative on that front than there really needs to be. Uh, the team also was running the ball, had a certain game plan, and stuck to it. I will say I wasn't, uh, I, I did call it. And it's funny because Shiano, you know, to his credit, straight up referenced it, you know, without really being prompted other than Steve Politi asking if he was too conservative. He knew exactly a play that, that he could reference. And I felt the same exact way. And I disagreed with Shiano in the third quarter when we came out and it was fourth and two at midfield and the game and momentum was completely on our side. And with the way we had been running the ball and the way our line had been opening things up, I said, look, you go for it here. On fourth and two at midfield, you go for it. Yes, high risk, high reward. But so is punting in that situation. And we unfortunately saw that. If you go for it on fourth and two at midfield, and I'm not one to say that all the time. I'm not overly aggressive when I'm looking at these things. But fourth and two at midfield at that point in the game, at that particular point in the game, I think it would have completely broken the will of Virginia Tech and completely would have blown the game open early in the third quarter. But instead, we pass up the opportunity to do that. We punt the ball, and VTech 
gets things going. And momentum shifted quite a bit in that third quarter. That's the second time that we've seen momentum shift like that in the third quarter. It's a bit concerning. I don't expect it to be an ongoing trend because of two things. One, I think our team might kind of expect to win in these first three games. And once they go up by a significant amount, they get a little bit, you know, they take their foot off the gas a little bit. I don't think that's going to happen with anybody on the Big Ten schedule. Two, um, you know, I think we're going to, I don't know if we're going to have those type, type of leads to be able to take our foot off any type of gas. Hopefully, this is the one thing I would watch out for. Hopefully, we're not in dogfights by seven points, winning by a small score against Big Ten teams, and think we can go into a shell and run the clock out in the third quarter. Hopefully, we don't. Because if you remember, and it's funny, because Shiano referenced that exact play, so he knew exactly what Politi was referencing, what we all saw. He stuck by his guns. He said, you know, we were up by that much. You punt the ball. The defense is playing well. Now they have to go the whole field. I still disagree in that particular situation, but that's why he gets paid millions of dollars to coach, and I'm in a basement bar doing a video on a Sunday morning. So, I mean, I have nothing to say about it other than, you know, my opinion. Um, but, look, the, some of the reason in the old days that Shiano was so successful was – you know, the crazy special teams plays or the little wrinkles in an offense or defense that no one saw coming. Like something like going forward at fourth and two at midfield is exactly that. Now, the that's the other reason I don't expect to see much more of these, many more of these third quarter lulls is we're going to be going up against teams where he's going to have to empty the bank. He's going to have to empty the cachet. He can't just be sitting around playing with, you know, he's going to be playing with house money. It's not going to be these, these teams where we need the victory. Uh, so... He might, you know, go crazy on those and go for those fourth and twos against these upper echelon Big Ten teams. So I don't expect it to become a continuing trend, but it was a trend these first couple games. Defense, I got to be honest, like from what we heard about Virginia Tech's offensive line being young, you know, being kind of weak compared to their defensive line, I didn't think we got that many pressures on a quarterback who held the ball for a little while. Now, towards the end, we did. And, you know, when he got himself into trouble, we did. And we still had a good defensive showing overall. But it was a little concerning that we weren't early and often getting to him and causing a lot more havoc throughout the course of the game. Obviously, early the first drive, we did it. Obviously, in other situations towards the end. Obviously, you know, in the second half when we were just going back and forth, we had a turnover. Even though we didn't make anything out of it, it changed the game. It just flipped the field. We had the defense make impactful plays. And they were good as far as, you know, as the game wore on. You know, Virginia Tech really never had a foothold in the game. And they only really got close to it in the by the end of the third. Um, but a little concerning. You didn't see a lot more pressure. If this defense is going to be like a key element to us being competitive in the Big Ten and a key element to us making a bowl run, you want to see them be a lot more impactful. So hopefully that gets cleaned up as well. Um Overall, look, we are 3-0, and and we are 3-0, and and I know we were 3-0 and each of the last couple years, too, or 2021, and yeah, but look, we are 3-0 and in a much different way this time. We opened with a Big Ten opponent. I know it's probably the worst Big Ten uh, team that there is this year. Doesn't matter. It's still a Big Ten opponent, and we opened with them and beat them decisively. Now, Duke is number 20 in the country or something, and they beat Northwestern by a similar score in a similar type of situation that we did. Uh, Northwestern killed their lower you know, end opponent last week. It's, it's still a Big Ten team, even though it's the worst one. That's fine. Then we play Temple, who's hungry to beat us, who's amped up, who's not a team that should beat us, not a team that should contend with a Big Ten, Ten team. So nothing to pat ourselves in the back about, but we beat them decisively, and we turned up the heat in that game when, you know, things got pulled into question. Now this game, uh, Virginia Tech, you know, a, a long-time nemesis in the Big East. We dominated them in like the 20s, 30s, and 50s, but we hadn't beat them very much at all until 92, you know, for most of our existence in the late 20th century, early 21st century. And we take it to them. And what I liked about this game and what stands out to me and what bodes well for the future this year and the program going forward, in my opinion, is this wasn't a game where we came out and something was just off in a mismatch and we just dominated and blew through Virginia Tech on fluke turnovers or, you know, some kind of crazy mismatch or something like that. 
And this wasn't a game where we were in a dogfight. This was a game where, methodically, on both sides of the football, throughout the entire hour of the game, we just lined up nose to nose with, you know, not a very good and an injured, but a legitimate college football team from a legitimate conference. You know, some people don't want to acknowledge that. From a legitimate conference. We lined up nose to nose and we just beat them and we beat them solidly and decisively in a football game with not a lot of craziness happening. That bodes well. And I don't remember the last time I've seen that. Does that mean we're going to go and beat Michigan Saturday? No. And I'm going to talk to you guys about that. I'll have a video out this week, you know, previewing Michigan and just discussing things more in depth as I usually do. But it bodes well against other teams, and it bodes well as far as the development of the program. Uh, Kyle Manungai, what can you say? The guy has absolutely you know, pushed himself and earned the spot as a top running back. Sam Brown's a little younger. I don't think he's 100%. I don't think he's fully in game shape yet, but it's good he's getting the reps. But I'll tell you what, Benjamin, Brown, Salam. Or Manungai, I don't care. Any one of those guys, I guarantee you, you can put in and they'll be impactful. But right now, Kyle is running with a head full of steam and he's decisively the number one and there's no way around it and he's earned it. And I love the cast of running backs we have, but hopefully he keeps going and he has an absolutely stellar season for himself, for his career, for the Knights, etc. Uh, beautiful, just a side note, beautiful tailgate weather. That might be our best tailgate all year. Hopefully... You know, I mean, Michigan State is a is a noon kickoff, so that's not the same. Hopefully, we have another tailgate that good. Hopefully, Wagner's time is good, and hopefully, that's good weather. But the weather was just phenomenal. It was beautiful out. The three thirty kickoff was great. This is by far the most fans I've seen in the lots all season. Although, you know, it didn't look full initially, and I think it was because people were saying it was taking so long again to get into the stadium. Kind of interesting. Uh, that it took that long, but regardless, once it did fill up, the corners were filled, the uppers had a lot more people in them than normally, and look, the Hokies fans came out, they were good spirited, they were singing their songs, they were cheering, they got loud when they were on defense, when they started getting momentum back, so it was fun to have another, you know, legitimate fan base in the building, they were good sports, they were, they were all like friends with people from Rutgers and hanging out around the lots and in the game. Just a lot of fun. Just a great Saturday college football atmosphere, which is what we've come to expect from Rutgers. I'll probably have another little film thing go out because I took some really cool footage of the Blue Lot. And those of you who know that Sir Henry visited us and whatnot know that. But guys, if you haven't done so yet, if you're a Knights fan or you just like college sports or you just like good objective conversation analysis on Rutgers football and the Big Ten and basketball, uh, hit that subscribe button if you can. It takes two seconds. It's right here. I'll wait. I'll give you that second. Hit that button. It's right here, and it really does wonders for the channel. We've grown so much as of recent, uh, and I'm continuing to grow, trying to put out another outlet. You know, I know you have a lot of great outlets out there. You have Aaron Brightman. You have the, the you know, Richie. You have them, and they're all awesome, too. And, you know, they are obviously the bigger fish in the pond, but I'm just trying to add another little bit of content because there's simply not enough. And, hey, if you help me grow, I'll help turn out, continue to churn out good content. It was a pleasure meeting you guys out in the lots. I met a couple people came up to me and just wanted to talk. Awesome meeting you. Feel free. I'm at every game in the blue lot, front row. You can't miss me. Come say hi. But you'll hear from me again soon, man. Enjoy your victory Sundays. Enjoy your NFL teams. Whatever else you're doing, family, friends, whatever. And I will talk to you guys later in the week, man. Go Knights.